svému kolegovi z Akaresearch, panu Guillaumovi, který vám posléze také může zodpovědět, jaké, zodpovědět jakékoliv technické dotazy. Takže předávám slovo, přeji hezkou zábavu a nadávám hezký den. Hello, so uh, really nice to meet you all. Um, the idea is that we wanted to share with you our uh, vision for the future of mobility. So um, this is not only an autonomous car, it's uh, a glance of what could be the future of mobility. Uh, the first thing is that if you uh, took a step back about our current mobility, you might notice that we are more and more in cities that we are still using one vehicle per person and that uh, our car we actually use it maybe one, two hours per day. So there is something which is not efficient in that sense when you look at it. And so with uh, the MB Tech and ACA technology we wanted to offer something quite new and to propose something uh, that could be the future of mobility. So this vehicle here you, you, you will see is in a kind of valet parking mode, so uh, it's, uh, it enables, uh, I mean, for example, I can call it and, and the vehicle uh, must, must come. So uh, the idea that I just call it like with my hand right now, but it could be with a smartphone or whatever, and the vehicle is able to notice that and to come to me uh, to grab me. And the idea is that. What's important today is that this vehicle is running inside the building. So, I mean, there is no trick with GNSS or stuff like that because it's not possible inside the building. So it's really uh, only with its own sensors that it, is able, that it is able to drive. So something interesting, as I said, is that it's not only an autonomous car, it's a car that is electric too, and that is driven by wire. So we have tried to minimize uh, all the mechanical parts and movements in the vehicle in order to be efficient in terms of consumption and in order to be efficient in, the, um, in terms of weight. So the idea is that uh, the vehicle is able to, to detect me <laughs> normally <laughs> and to stop um, and the vehicle is able to be driven only by a computer. So if you look at the suspension here, they are directional, so they are rotating around uh, their own axis, so it's the full, uh, full suspension that turns around its axis in order to uh, like provide the direction to the vehicle. At the back you have some uh, electric engines that are directly plugged on the wheel axis, and so it enables to have like a lot of space inside the vehicle, you will, you will see it, it's a small car, but inside you have like lots of space thanks to this uh, dream drive by wire technology. Something interesting too is that it's a connected car too. So uh, the idea is that the vehicle is able to be connected to the infrastructure and to the other vehicle in order to exchange information. So I will just let it go uh, like that. Uh, it can you can see that it can run a full uh, a full path in an autonomous mode. The idea is that, as I said, the vehicle is connected. So connected means that obviously you are able to uh, surf the internet, you are able to have uh, points of, inter inter uh, point of interest around you, you are able to uh, have like information on the traffic to optimize your path. But it's not only that to be connected. To be connected is, uh, being, a is uh, being able to provide some information to the environment too. So the vehicle is full of sensors and those sensors are able to estimate lots of uh, things in the environment. So the example I always give is that, for example, we have an inertial measurement unit inside the vehicle that is able to measure all the vibration of uh, the body, uh, uh, the structure of the vehicle. So these vibrations are closely linked to the quality of the road. So a city, for example, could use these data in order to have, uh, to monitor the quality of its road and in order to target which roads need to be uh, to, to have some work and which roads are sensible, for example, to weather conditions and so on in order to uh, put a better, uh, um, I mean, better uh, concrete stuff on it or um, the, the idea is really that we can monitor everything. 
Another example is, is that with the lidar uh, that are inside the vehicle, they are accurate enough to monitor the quality and the buildings too. So for example, if the building is moving and so it is uh, about to collapse, the system can detect that there is some differences through the time, and so you can monitor that too. So it, it is really able to, to do lots of things and to provide information to you. Being connected is not only uh, uh, benefits from the data uh, around the surrounding, it's providing some data too. So that's something important. And well, uh, obviously it's autonomous too, so the idea is that you can uh, drive the vehicle yourself with your own hands, or you can like, decide to enjoy uh, the, the trip time in order to do something else. Uh, so that's like the important. Sometimes we, we, need, uh, we, we spend lots of time in our car, so it, it is nice to, to, uh, to benefit uh, this time in order to do other things. So well, the idea, if you trust us, is to test it. And so to get inside it and to, to feel how it, how it is inside the vehicle. So please welcome on board. Sorry, I, I have got to the steering. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, as I said, you can decide to put the steering wheel back mm -hmm. and to have this living room mode okay. that enables to make the most of the driving time. So welcome on board. <laughs> One more time. Hello. <laughs> so the idea is to uh, go along the path in an autonomous mode. And we wanted you to see two main functions of the vehicle. The first one on the left is the obstacle detection. The second one on the right is the localization. So as I said before, there is something interesting in this demonstration is that we are inside a building. So there is definitely no GNSS available. So no GPS, GLONASS or whatever. The idea is only the embedded sensors that enable us to drive the car inside this uh, parking lot. So if you look at the map here, we actually recorded the map of the parking, uh, parking lot here. So this is the map. So it's a map seen from the top leader here. Mm -hmm. So the top leader is important because we want to focus on the static part of the environment. So that's why it's on, at the rooftop, because we just want to have buildings, trees, here it's pillars, and the things that are uh, uh, on the roof of the parking lot, because it enables us to accurately locate the vehicle inside these parking spots. And on the other hand here, you have like the obstacle detection. So as you've noticed, <laughs> it detected my colleague, uh, <laughs> luckily. And the idea is that it is based on data from the LIDAR in the front bumper. Mm -hmm. So in this front bumper, you have a LIDAR and that provides all these white dots you see here. So all these white dots are laser impact. So they are five centimeters accurate. Mm -hmm. and, that, and they enable us to uh, distinguish an obstacle that is on the trajectory from an obstacle that is beside the trajectory. So for example, this pillar here and my colleague, they are just close to the trajectory, but not on the trajectory. And so we are able to di distinguish that and so to go on because there is nothing to worry about. If someone is on the trajectory, as it was the case before, we can, uh, we can uh, break down. Something interesting too is that you might be bored about the autopilot and so you might want to drive by yourself and so you just like turn the front seat, grab the steering wheel and say, as a normal mode, you say, okay, I would like to end by myself and you drive by yourself for the ultimate matters in that case. <laughs> Mm. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you.